competition and I'd love to talk for seven minutes about how lovely it is, but instead I'm going to talk about the motion. Of course, three main points. Firstly, I'm going to talk about why these kind of changes specifically and most prominently are exactly the changes that require are exactly the kind of social changes that require change to be organic rather than imposed from outside. We think that imposing them from outside is a harm. It will lead not only to the changes not happening in the most effective way, but to an active but, um, that will act actively be counterproductive. Secondly, I'm going to talk about backlash, like the first speaker wants me to. I'm going to talk exactly about how the policy introduces backlash and how it's counterproductive to these rights genuinely being promoted within countries. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about how that turns states against the EU, how that's bad in itself, but it's also bad in terms of promoting progressive rights, which we quite like to promote. But briefly, a few points of rebuttal that don't fall under those headings. So first of all, on how like, the EU has a responsibility to like, be a beacon of like, freedom and human rights and like, a role model and a promise of a better future. Now number one, like, for that to be a point, you have to already believe that this is going to work. So all of my arguments are about to follow about why this is going to work. But that argument just doesn't stand by itself. But moreover, we think that Europe is already a beacon through things like the um, European Convention on Human Rights, and through things like the values that we exhibit, we think that the fact that people can look to the United Kingdom, can look to countries such as Germany, and such as Sweden, and such as other countries, and that they like, see the values being like, put into action is already sufficient like, of a beacon of human rights. No thank you. Um, then also this last point about like, it being necessary for free movement. And this is going to become more clear under my first heading. But we think what this policy does is it actually gives them the illusion of free movement. We think the fact that a country has gay marriage like, on the statute books doesn't prevent that country from potentially being incredibly homophobic, from incredi being incredibly hostile, from being an incredibly violent place to visit. We see that South Africa is a country which implemented incredibly aggressive gay, rights, gay marriage legislation there are nevertheless, as a gay man, parts of South Africa that I would be scared for my life to visit. We see that implementing laws does not change attitudes, and it's attitudes that we need to change in this debate. No thank you. And third of all, briefly, about normalisation. Because our proposition want you to believe that gay marriage, or like similar progressive legislation, leads to the changing of values. The problem is that's just not true. It's not true, first of all, because people who take advantages of these kind of legal rights are like, number one, ostracized. So like, if you're in a homophobic country and you get like, and a man gets married to a man, like they're no longer able to participate in society to the same extent, more on that later. But secondly, because the rights that they're taking, like partaking in, are seen as the rights of the other. They're seen as like a European right rather than like a right of the country that I live in. They're seen as being doing something foreign to the native culture. So again, you don't get the, the normalization proposition we want you to believe in. First of all, my organic chamber is necessary for these things. No thank you. Because these are rights to do with like, what is normal, what is moral, what is like, religiously and culturally accepted. And we think the state's involvement with these situations is actually very marginal. Like, as a gay man, my relationship engages the state like, maybe for like half a day at the point at which like, I have a marriage ceremony, and then maybe much later in terms of like, inheritance or something like that. Most of it is to do with engaging with other people. It's to do with no thank you, like talking about, like talking to one's family, talking to one's friends, talking to one's co-workers. And we think that those are the important things to change. We think similar things could be said about abortion rights, similar things, no thank you, could be said about minority integration. We think that a legal right, therefore, in an atmosphere of hostility and intolerance just doesn't accrue the benefits to like self-actualization, to being a happier person. And, the, and like more, more, even more than that, when it's seen as being like forced by a, like a sort of aggressive, overbearing European Union, even the legal agents meant to be enforcing these rights, so even the doctors who are like, might be like treating somebody after a hate crime, even the policemen who are supposed to look after people, even like the people within the justice system enforcing these kind of rights, are then like unwilling to enforce them because they don't see it as a right that belongs to them, that it's their duty to enforce. They see it as something that the EU has placed upon them unfairly, and so they're less likely to put them into action, again, inhibiting the ability of these benefits to accrue. But I'll take closing. So you're trying to tell us at the same time that the EU is already a beacon for human rights, and somehow its citizens are so oppressive that they're going to react so aggressively to this policy. Which one is it, sir? Okay, so the EU is quite big. There's a lot of different countries in it, there's a lot of different cultural attitudes. <coughs> 
We think that there are parts of the EU that are quite culturally progressive, like in some ways. They're also like not particularly culturally progressive in other ways. And we think that there are parts of the EU, particularly some of the newer member states, which are much less progressive in their social attitudes. We also think that the European Union is courting new estates, particularly on the eastern fringes, and that's going to become more important in my next two points. So let's get to it. How this policy induces backlash is counterproductive. I've already talked about how these rights are seen as imposed, and how like, they're conflated, therefore, with being foreign ideas. So we see this a lot of the time in the debates about homosexuality within Africa, where homosexuality is described very popularly as like a Western aberration, something that the West like imperialistically brings towards us. We think that these kind of laws, these kind of measures, only like add to that sort of rhetoric. We see secondly that like the action of like in sort of like advocacy groups and human rights groups can like be prevented from happening by like a government that's like potentially quite hostile to them, no thank you. Because the government is able to point at like legislation to the EU and claim that everything as proposition does is alright. I think that's particularly problematic in like ex-Soviet states who see like Vladimir Putin does at the moment, like LGBTQ groups as sort of like foreign intervention that is like a threat to his power. We think those kind of things are very problematic. And thirdly, we think that because these rights are conflated with Europe, Euroscepticism, the idea that Europe, like, like sort of skepticism about being a member of the EU, like, immediately turns into skepticism about these kind of progressive rights. Again, we think that's a bad thing. And lastly, how this begins to turn states against the EU. So, I think this is especially important as the EU is expanding and as our like, increasing engagement with like, countries on the periphery and countries that might like, potentially become part of the EU. Especially like these are the countries where the cultural values significantly clash the kind of progressive things we're talking about. And we think what that means is you inhibit the kind of genuine cultural interactions that do lead to organic change. You inhibit people coming over and like interaction with like gay people, with women who are sexually liberated, with like ethnic minorities and religious minorities. And even where those people are still coming over, when they like exhibit these progressive features, they're seen as doing so because they're European rather than because they're human. So ladies and gentlemen, we very much want progressive values, but they can only happen when they happen organically, and this policy actively inhibits that. I beg to oppose.